Well, g'day, g'day, and welcome back again to Chaoqing, and we're back on our bike. We've just finished at the Dragon Boat Racing here on our bike, heading back. Well, we're going to go and try and find a drink somewhere, and uh, figured as we're riding back, with the amount of people here, <laughs> the amount of cars and traffic and the like, I'd uh, put the camera on just for safety's sake. So uh, if we do have accidents, I've got some evidence with me and uh, figured as we're doing that, we may as well have a chat on our way through. Okay, we're going to duck in front of this car. So we're basically heading back down to the river. Uh, we're going to ride along the river and then back over the bridge on our way back over to Duan Joe. But yeah, there's a, there's a few things over this side to, uh, that are worth having a look at. So coming up, just up in front of us here, we've got a big public square type of area. There's a guy setting up, she looks like there might be a few stalls in here now. People setting up stalls to, uh, to sell whatever they're selling out for cars here so uh, so we've got a few of these little uh, electric vehicles here knocking around kids out here having great fun these couple of boys chilling around oh we've got a couple of girls on this one over here having a good time Peppa Pig on the front and then we've got little go-karts up there, a little electric trike. Then uh, down here looks like we have some kites, some ring toss games, all sorts of things to uh, keep the kids slightly occupied for a little while. Oh wow, it's warm out here. Okay, and then we're going to move around to our left here, get onto the main pathway through here. So we see a few, I don't know whether they are eagles or hawks flying out on our right up ahead of us. When we get a bit closer we'll uh, stop and have a look. I don't know how well, how well we'll be able to zoom in on them. There's uh, one, two, three of them flying around there. So some sort of hawk or eagle. I'm inclined to say eagle. But I'll have to get online and have a look at what the difference is. Wow, them feathers look stunning when you see the top of them. I saw one of these a while back. Uh, way over by Star Lake, well, over Star Lake, just sort of uh, hovering there above the, uh, above the water. And maybe, oh, I don't know, maybe 100 feet, 150 feet up in the air. Let's just pull in here. See if they come a little bit closer for us. They do look spectacular. I love watching these guys fly around. See these guys all the time out here, either here or around the lake. But yeah, this one I saw in the lake was uh, flying around and just suddenly dropped, dropped down, hit the water, and came back up with a uh, well. What looked from a distance, I was you know, a fair way away, but what looked fair-sized fish, and up he went and took off. He uh, got himself a nice feed out of that one, or herself. So there's a lot of uh, a lot of boats parked over here. Actually, this uh, this just down. I don't know how well we can see this over the uh, over the hill, but just down here, I think, was where you used to catch a ferry. I uh, used to be able to catch a ferry. We'll take you over the other side of the river there. Uh, I think it cost five RMB, so one dollar Australian. It was sort of a 
maybe a 10 minute ride over the river. They were very slow boats, but a very, very nice way to get over the river. Um, but they seem to have gone. I haven't seen the ferries operating for, well, since before COVID. I think they uh, stopped operating over COVID and with all the bridges now, because they've built two new bridges over the river here since I got here. Um, I think a lot of more people are, you know, riding bikes, driving cars to get over the other side of the river. So maybe the ferries have just, just gone away, basically. The, um, the, I, I'm told there used to be a car ferry operating back, further back behind us, a couple of kilometres back along the way. Uh, but I never actually saw that in operation. They'd closed that down before I got here. Um, but yeah, I was driving along one day. Oh, a guy from a kindergarten came and picked me up. I was going to play some music for some kids. And as we were driving along, I saw this big... It looked like, you know, like one of them super yacht type of things. Not quite as nice as super yacht style, but I saw that and I sort of... I said to him, oh, what's that? And by the time I sort of got around to asking, we had already, we had already uh, gone past it. He couldn't see. So I went up a couple of nights later, took a photo and sent to, I think I sent it to Frankel or Vivian. I said, what's this boat? I said, oh, that's the old car ferry. So yeah, before they built all these new bridges, it was a car ferry because we used to have this bridge in front of us that we're going over. And then the, uh, the next bridge is you know, 10 kilometers, well, close to 10 kilometers, I think, back down the other way. The uh, big bridge in the middle hadn't been built yet. They were still building that when I got here. Uh, so yeah, it was, I guess, quite a mission to get over the, over the river in a car with only two bridges and the amount of traffic that's here would have been a nightmare. Oh, there's another of these big eagles up in front of us here. They just look majestic gliding up there. Absolutely beautiful. Stunning birds. I remember uh, going up Bluff Knoll, uh, which those of you who are watching who are from Albany, you'll know Bluff Knoll, but those of you from further afield, uh, Bluff Knoll is sort of the biggest mountain, I think it's the tallest mountain in the southwest of Western Australia. Uh, I remember climbing up there one day and the old track, uh, when I was a kid to get up there, from the parking, for the parking lot down the bottom, used to be a really rough path pretty much straight up the mountain. You went from the parking lot straight up to the top. They've rebuilt that now and it sort of circles around the edge of the mountain a bit. So I think a much, much easier climb. I don't think it's much quicker. Uh, it's probably a little bit longer than the original climb, but it's a much easier climb, much easier for you know older people and stuff to make. But uh, one place where you walk around the uh, sort of, as you're getting up towards the top, you're sort of looking down, you know, right down the edge of the mountain. And there were two big, big wedge-tailed eagles uh, soaring just off, just off the edge of the mountain and right below us. So we're sort of looking down at, you know, the wing patterns from above. They were just such beautiful birds. Yeah, I do love, I do love watching those big eagles soaring on the wind. They're not as big here, but they're still beautiful. So you can see on our right, I don't know how or where this camera's positioned, but uh, see over that fence, a lot of these boats parked up here. So it is a Monday. But we are on a public holiday, so there are still boats going up and down the river, but it's 
So a lot of boats not operating, not operating today. Actually, one thing we'll have to uh, look out for is uh, when the swim happens. There's a swim every year that happens. They swim from over the other side of the river, uh, right the way across here to this side. And for the duration of that swim, they block the river off back at the bridge up here and block the river off at the bridge. So all the boats have to stop. There's no boats allowed through for the maybe 45 minutes to an hour that they're doing that swim. And uh, so yeah, I'm definitely keeping an eye out for when that swim happens. We'll come out and video that swim, but once the swim's over, the boats just swarm through here. It's amazing to watch. So yeah, that's something to uh, look out for in the future. So I'll, when I get home, when I get home from here, I'll, uh, I'll check with Frankel and I'll get him to contact his mum because I don't know if his mum still does, does that swim or if she's retired from that now. She, she is getting on in years, but I think she still swims on a regular basis. Whether she does that swim still, I'm not sure. I wouldn't be surprised. I mean, she's getting on, but she's still a, she's still a pretty fit and healthy healthy lady um, so yeah I'll find out when that is so that I make sure it's on my calendar it is a really really good event and it's so so good to watch them boats and there's so many boats coming down the river it's really cool up on the left here which I don't know how well we can see through those trees but uh, new apartments being built on our left just just back behind us we've got more brand new apartments so these ones here were still under construction when I first arrived so they're only they've only been lived in a couple of years just looking up at the verandas okay so the building furthest around on our left there looks like that's just about every apartment is full the one around to our right it looks like there might be a couple of apartments that are still empty but mostly full and this front one, which was the latest one to open, there's still maybe 10 to 12 apartments look like they're still empty on that one. So they are pretty well filled up. The ones that are still empty have probably been bought. People are just waiting to get more money together to, uh, to fit out the apartment. So as I've said before, you buy an, you know, a new apartment here, they're pretty much just a shell then you come in and you put in all your cabinets and electrical fittings you paint the place do all that so you don't generally i think most people don't buy a completely ready to move in an apartment when they're buying new so these ones on our left here these look like they are just just finished if they're finished if they are finished it's only only very very just in fact there's still scaffolding and stuff up on the building in the back there so the front couple of buildings look like they're done but maybe not quite ready to move in yet and then there's more being built up further up around here yeah I think I think there'll be a lot of people coming out this way sort of a bit cheaper than being over in a uh, bit cheaper than being over in Duan Zhou maybe and it's you know with all the bridges now it's not that much of a mission if you work over in Duan Zhou to get over that way so where we're going up now if we carry on down this way that'll lead us to our old old Catholic Church down along the river but we're going to duck through here to our right get up onto the bridge and uh, find our way over the bridge okay sneak through these barriers So it's good, they've got a couple of uh, sort of notations on them barriers telling you how many centimetres you have 
uh, of space to get through. Oh, we have a train coming across the bridge by the sound of it. Might get up, get up there in time to see him coming through. What have we got? A uh, freight train. I wonder what he's carrying in those tanks. But yeah, very, very busy, uh, very, very busy uh, bridge for trains, this one. It, uh, only a single lane, so... So they need very, very good planning, I imagine. And that's the end of the train. We'll just take a nice, slow, leisurely ride over here. Hoy, she is a very, very warm day. That's it's only uh, 30 degrees, they say, but geez, it feels a bit more than that. Feels close to about 35. And over 30, <laughs> over 30 is getting a bit warm for my liking. I'm definitely a cooler weather sort of person. We've got another bike coming past, we'll let all these guys whip past us. So yeah, I imagine, so we've got the railway line here, up above us here is the, uh, is the road bridge. I think that was the original road bridge and they've since built this bridge, although this bridge was before my time. Uh, this was built when I got here already. The next bridge up the way they uh, they were building when I got here that opened after about a year after I'd been here and then further you know the, the furthest bridge sort of 10k ish down the road uh, they had one like this which I think is two lanes either way and they've just finished building a second one to mirror it. So they've now got four lanes on one bridge one way, four lanes on the other bridge the other way. And uh, I think they're probably good now. Um, yeah, when I first got here, I used to come down here and these bridges would be just, just a parking lot during peak hour. <laughs> But yeah, they're not nearly so busy now with all the extra bridges, all the extra crossing points. They seem to have got everything to a good place. Oh, people up here taking photos. So this staircase up here leads right up to the roadway on top. I haven't actually been up to the roadway up there. And then you can actually walk down the steps to get down to road level here. But we're actually going to go around, <laughs> around this little sort of helixical walkway to get us back down the bottom. A little bit bumpy. And then, well, I don't know how well you can see from up here. When we get down the bottom, we'll, we'll stop and show you, but there's a uh, nice garden down the bottom here. Lots of different things being planted in there. Over to the left here, is a big park area so yeah you can actually duck in here walk under the bridges in the shade it's a nice little place I don't go there terribly often but I do get there occasionally it's really nice in the summertime uh, sit in the shade under the bridges and it's nice and cool there's lots of plants trees grass to keep you cool it's a uh, yeah nice nice little spot So as we wind our way down, we can probably get a bit of a better view of this uh, garden inside us on our right. It's a, uh, yeah, it's a good little garden. It'd be a nice place to be, a nice place to come work in the afternoon actually, if you're doing gardening. 
if uh, you'd be well in the shade from the road bridge, the rail bridge and from this walkway. So yeah, it'd be a nice place and you know, if you got a bit of breeze coming in off the river, it'd be one of the better places to be gardening, I think, in that sort of afternoon, any time after sort of three o'clock. Now, got to remember which of these gates I can fit through. Uh, they have the measurements on them, but it is on the other side, I think. It's this one that I can fit through, if my memory serves me well. Oh, it's tight. But yes, we're through there. And then it's a left turn and back on our way to school. So, we might leave you there. I hope you've enjoyed that little, uh, little ride along the way. Uh, a little look at, a little bit of Gao Yao. We'll try and get over there a bit more in the future. So a lot of really cool old parts of Gao Yao that I want to go and have a look at. So that'll be coming up. So hit that like button, subscribe to the channel to see more over there and more here in general. Um, if you have any questions, comments, hit us up in the comment section. Anything you'd like to see about life here in China, again, hit us up in the comment section and uh, we'll go away and investigate and be sure to bring you stuff that you're interested in seeing. <laughs> so thanks for watching everybody. Stay safe and we will see you all in the next one. Cheers.